In this video, we're going to be making some pear cider using pears from my garden. We need to pick the pears when they are at their ripest. This just makes sure that we get the most juice out of them possible. Once we've picked the pears, you need to then store them somewhere for about a week, put them in a wheelbarrow or a big bucket or something, store them in the garage or somewhere just out of the elements, leave them for about a week, and then we're ready to do the next part of this. At this stage of the pear cider making, this is all the stuff you're gonna need. I will put links down in the description where you can get all this stuff, but this, I bought it all last year and it's still good as new. This bucket's pretty much full now, so we're just gonna put the last of this in here. We haven't even got through half of the pears, so still got quite a lot to go. But it's a good time to show you what the next steps are. So let's take this over to the table. Okay, so that should be okay for now. We pull this mesh in, and we're gonna cover it up like that so this is how the kit comes basically you have this here which you have a handle like this the screws in and you're twisting it around and basically pushing down on this however to make this even more effective I cut up a whole bunch of these spare bits of wood that I had it lying around and I use that to help with the press so we just line that up and kind of build a tower around this There we go. So we can see there the pear juice is already coming out and it'll start coming out a lot quicker as we push this down. So there you can see it's really coming out now. All of the pears are now completely mashed up. So you can see I'm getting this straight from the press into the bucket, it just makes life a little bit easier. Another thing I'm doing as well is I'm filling this right up to the top and I'm squishing it down by hand before I put in the wood blocks, just so I can make the most out of the compression. So you just need a little bit of a gap at the top here, just, just a little bit of a gap there and that'll be more than enough. So there we go, we are done. Uh, we had about two gallons in there, so two imperial gallons, which is about eight liters or so. So not too bad. I was hoping for a bit more, but one of our pear trees didn't produce as many pears as they did last year. So what we need to do now is add some Camden tablets. And these here are to kill any bugs or any yeast that might be naturally occurring inside the pears and uh, we want to make sure that that's all dead so when we add in our proper fermenting yeast to make proper cider that it doesn't compete with any natural bacteria or natural yeast that might be inside there so what we need to do is we need to add one camden tablet per gallon of juice that we have over there what we need to do is cover it up with the lid and let it sit for a day with the Camden tablets to make sure that everything inside there is dead and then we can start the actual fermentation. It's now been 24 hours since we got the juice from our pears 
and it's time to do the next stage. So here's the juice. We can see there we have two gallons and we have two one gallon demijohns. So these are both clean. I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse and then I'm gonna use some no rinse sanitizer. It's always important when you are doing this to keep things as clean as you possibly can. I use star sand for my no rinse sanitizer. Um, you can use anything you want as long as you're using some sort of sanitizer just before you start creating your pear cider. You don't need a lot. Just need enough to be able to coat the inside. Like I said, this is a no rinse sanitizer, so I don't have to rinse this out with water after I've done this. So just remember, sterilize and sanitize. We're gonna be adding two other things to the pear juice to help this ferment. And the first one is the yeast. So I'm using something called super wine yeast, quite inexpensive to buy and it really works well. And the other one is bentonite. This helps to clear the pear cider so that it just looks a lot nicer. You're going to need one teaspoon of each of these. So one teaspoon of the bentonite and one teaspoon of the yeast. I think I'm going to use a larger funnel because I don't want to spill everywhere. I filled these up quite a bit probably made a bit of a mistake there. This is quite an active fermentation. I think I should get away with it. The problem is that this creates a lot of bubbles and if the bubbles get all the way up to the top here, it could blow the top off, but we'll take a chance. You wanna try and keep it a little bit lower than this, probably just off the shoulder of the Demijohn. We're gonna take these bits that we've put inside the sanitizer and we're going to be putting those into the jug. So I'm actually going to leave some of the sanitizer inside the uh, airlock instead of using just plain water. You want to make sure if there's any of the yeast or bentonite hanging around the, the neck of the demijohns that you just want to give them a bit of a shake so that you make sure it all gets into the liquid itself. Now what you need to do is you need to put this in a place where you can maintain a temperature of around about 20 degrees Celsius. I have a brewing fridge that I've built, so I'll be putting it inside there. It's been about 12 hours now since we put the pear cider into the ferminator. And let's have a look at it. We can see lots of activity there. Um, the bubbles are just from the star sand that I used. So just move that out the way. But we can see there it's bubbling away very nicely. And as well on this side, this side's a little bit more active at the moment. If we have a look down the bottom here, we can see everything uh, separating here. So we'll just leave that to go. It looks a bit funky, but I promise you it's all good. It's going well. We'll come back and have a look at it in a couple more days. These have been fermenting now for 22 days and it's time for us to start the bottling process. So if we have a look at this, you can see how different this looks from when we started. You can see how this is really cleared up. So that's all the dead yeast as well as any of the particulates that was in the pear juice when we started this. So let's put these aside for just one second and we need to start preparing the rest of the process. I would say probably 90% of what we do when we brew, whether it's beer or wine or cider, it doesn't matter what it is, but 90% of it is cleaning. It's very important to keep it clean because you don't want any funky tastes or anything to go off inside your brew, especially after you've gone and spent so much time and effort making it. One thing to point out, when you are moving these around, be very careful. You don't want to mix up all the sediment again. Well, that needs to stay right at the bottom there, so uh, I'm trying to move them as carefully as I can. The first thing we need to do is sanitize our bottles. I've already cleaned these. I've used... Uh, VWP and I've given them a good clean and a rinse with some fresh water 
And what we need to do now is just sanitize it, which is just using a bit of star sand. So I've already diluted this in some fresh water, but this is the star sand itself. I really recommend getting some. It's so useful, not just for brewing, but I use it for making my sauces. Um, I use it just to keep things clean in general. So have a look for star sand. I'll leave a link down below for this. I use something that makes sanitizing bottles a heck of a lot easier. And it's this thing over here. This is awesome. So basically we just put a bit of star sand inside there. Just cover up the base. Just like that. I've also got this thing here, which is very helpful to let the bottles dry and drain out the, the remaining sanitizer. I'll show you how this works with a clear bottle first. It's pretty straightforward and quite ingenious. So you just put the bottle over the top and you can see it squirts on the inside, nice and easy. And then that just would go over there and drain out. So we finished with the bottles here. They are now draining off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this liquid as well to do a bit of sanitizing of the bottle caps I'm gonna be using. So these are just plain bottle caps, which I will be putting on top of the bottles and they just go in there. And that goes to one side. Something else you're gonna need here is a bucket. And this is a little bit special. It has a drilled out hole at the bottom. And this really makes it a lot easier to bottle your cider. Typically what people will do if they don't have something like I'm gonna show you here is they'd use a siphon and individually siphon into each of the bottles. That is a pain in the backside and it takes a long time and is very messy. This is a far better way. So obviously we have the hole at the bottom here and this is what fits inside that. It's basically a tap and at the bottom it's got a little point I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a little point at the bottom and you push that to the bottom of the bottle and the liquid comes out. Easy as that. There's a reason we take it out the fermenting jug and put it into something like this. There are a couple of reasons. Number one is you wanna take the liquid off the sediment that's at the bottom of the jars. And number two is you wanna mix in some sugar. The reason we mix in sugar is because if you're bottling with normal bottles like this, at the moment there's not going to be any fizziness to your pear cider and obviously we want some fizziness to it so the way to do that is to bottle it with a little bit of sugar inside here now you can go and add an individual teaspoon of sugar into each one of these bottles but that just sounds like hard work and it's not going to be entirely accurate we want to be consistent with what our pear cider tastes like so the better way to do it is to use a secondary bucket like this we're gonna pour the cider into here, we're gonna mix in the amount of sugar we need, and we'll then be able to bottle it up. So what I've got here is half a cup of boiling water, and we're gonna add the sugar to that, but we need to weigh the amount of sugar we need. I have 4.5 liters of pear cider in each of these jugs, which means I have a total of nine liters of pear cider. So we need five grams of sugar per half a liter, or per bottle, and that means 10 grams for a liter. Nine liters, 90 grams of sugar. Now, I don't like it as fizzy as that. If you, if you go the full uh, one teaspoon per bottle, it'll make it quite fizzy, so you want to bring it down to about 0.8. So roughly, if we're talking 90 grams of sugar, I wanna bring it down to maybe 80 grams of sugar. There we go, we have 80 grams of sugar. We're gonna add that into the half cup of boiling water. And we're gonna give that a stir. The reason we're using boiling water with this is so that the sugar dissolves. Let me explain why we're adding sugar to this at this stage when we're bottling. So like I said, it adds the fizziness, but why does it do that? When you're fermenting, and we've got to this stage now where it's a few weeks in, the cider has fermented through, which means the yeast has eaten all the nutrients, eaten all the sugars that are available to it inside those two uh, containers. Now, when we add sugar to the mix now before we bottle, it's going to give a little bit more food to the yeast that's inside there, and the yeast is gonna 
do what it was doing before, which is creating alcohol. And also it was creating CO2. So instead of the CO2 being able to come out through the bubblers, like they have been doing, they are going to be contained within the liquid and it's going to carbonate the drink. I'm first going to just get this inside here. My hands are clean. I have sprayed them with sanitizer as well. So just make sure you do that. Everything needs to be nice and clean. And give this a good tighten. So that is nice and tight. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to just siphon this out. So we just need to open this up. And again, we've been very careful. We don't wanna mix this up because we don't want the stuff at the bottom to get riled up. We have siphoned all the liquid out of the fermenting jars and we have this beautiful cider in here it's looking really good so what we need to do now is bottle but before we do that I need to put in the sugar water that I created earlier which is over here and that just gets poured straight in so I'm gonna need to raise this up so I can show you how I do the bottling normally I would just use it as it is over here I'll just bottle from down below but to give you an idea of how it works, I'm going to have to balance this a little bit here. So we have this all in place now and now is the part where we need to bottle these. This can take a little bit of time but I find it quite relaxing. What I will say is something to help you out is to have a light behind the bottle so you can see the level uh, as, the, as the bottle's getting filled up. So you just stick the bottle in the bottom, squeeze it, and I can see it filling up. I'm not sure if you're going to make that out on the camera. So you're going to let it come all the way to the top, and you'll see the liquid. So the liquid right now is there. With this inside here, basically you can let this go all the way to the top. When you pull it back, the space that that took up allows it to level set where it should be, which is about there. That's number one done. I like to do this in batches. So instead of doing one bottle and then putting the cap on, I like to do them all and then come back and do the capping afterwards. It makes the whole process a lot quicker. So let me get on with this and do these bottles and I will show you what the capping process looks like. We're done with pouring the cider into the bottles. We've ended up actually with 16 bottles, so that's eight liters. A little bit less than I expected, but I don't think I took into account how much we were gonna leave behind here. So do bear that in mind. Thankfully, I've added 80 grams of sugar and not the 90, because if I did the 90, we might end up with bottle bombs. But 80 grams for eight liters, spot on. Now we need to cap these. We have a nice tool to do it. It's this thing over here. You can get other cappers, but I like this one here. Okay. Uh, I guess <laughs> I'll do this a little bit backwards here, but I'm gonna show you how I do it from this angle. The first thing we need to do with this specific capper is get the height right. So a little button on the side here. I'm just gonna lift it all the way to the top. It's a little bit awkward working with it backwards, just so you can see what I'm doing. We need to take a bottle, stick it in the middle there nicely centered and we take one of these caps and we stick it on the top so we're going to bring this down now so we're going to leave a little bit of a gap there just so that when we do the next bottle we don't have to keep lifting this up and down hold it keep it firm you take this handle and give it a squeeze you'll feel it and there we go we've just bottled our first cider so you can see the cap has pushed over the edge and sealed it up and that is ready to go to the next stage. So I'm going to do the rest of these bottles and I will be right back with you. So there we go, we have bottled our pear ciders. 
I'm just going to wipe the tops because I need to write on them just to make it clear what they are. I used to put labels on the bottles, but it was just such a pain to get the labels off. So I found it a lot easier to just write on the bottle caps. Now, the last step of this process is to stick this back where you were fermenting the original pear cider. So I have the Ferminator, which is just a brewing fridge. I'll put a link up here if you want to see how to build one for yourself. These need to stay at room temperature or around about 20 degrees Celsius so that the yeast can do its job and carbonate these. I'm going to go and put these in the Ferminator and I'll be back with you in about a week or so and we'll give this a taste. Time to finish off this video. I've just spent the last six hours in the kitchen making a whole bunch of hot sauces and filming them and getting them all ready to go out on YouTube. And I thought what better time than now to actually finish off the pear cider video because I get to have some of my pear cider as a bit of a treat. So here we go. I've had this in the fridge for a little while. It's been conditioned for about three weeks in the Ferminator. So it's now it should be uh, nicely carbonated. And then I put it in the fridge to stop the fermentation and obviously to get it nice and cold because cider tastes much better when it's cold. So time to open it up. That's what we want to hear. That, that means it's been carbonated. And let's have a look at what we have. That's looking good. So bear in mind when you are doing your own fermentation of beer or cider or wine or anything like that, you are using live yeast. And that means don't pour very quickly and also don't pour the last little bit because there is going to be some dead yeast at the bottom here. And there we have our cider. That is looking awesome. So I hope yours turns out as well as this if you do give this a try. But the final test is, what does it taste like? That's perfect. Tastes spot on. Couldn't be happier with that. That's it for this video. I hope you do make your own pear cider. It, it's a fun thing to do, especially if you involve the family. And it is really easy to do as well. So if you have an abundance of pears or if you have access to some pears, then definitely give this a try. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again on the next video. Cheers.